Hello. Hello. K or S. Thursday, fourteen fourteen. Should I take a coat with me today? Current temp fifty six point nine seven degrees. High sixty point six seven. Low fifty three point four six. Clear clear sky. Big blue bus. What does big blue bus mean? What time is it? I learned big blue bus means what time is it? Big blue bus. Thursday, fourteen fifteen. Wrong answer. Sorry. What does big blue bus mean? What's the weather? I learned big blue bus means what's the weather. Big blue bus. Current temp fifty six point nine seven degrees. High sixty point six seven. Low fifty three point four six. Clear clear sky. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy, and in today's class, I am going to show you how you can manually train your AI-powered talking computer. So this is like the fourth class in this series of me showing you how to create a Lewis Rossman tracking robot, right? So our goal here at Silicon Dojo is to create a robot that can track and kill Lewis Rossmans so that we can send it over to Apple and they'll pay us a billion dollars, right? The problem is Lewis Rossman and the client is Apple. Lewis Rossman is real. Apple has a lot of money. I think that is what's going to pay for my retirement plan. So anyways, we've been dealing with this whole system. And so like the first class in the series, uh, I showed you this robot. So I have a face tracking robot that can track your face and basically move based off of where your face is. Uh, and on top of that, uh, basically, I want to add a voice communication to that robot. So basically, you can talk to the robot to give it commands and then it will actually respond based off of those commands. So with this, we're doing this on a computer. But the important thing to understand with robots is all a robot is is a computer with like wheels or legs or something like that right uh, basically that's the cool thing about the modern world it's it's the same crap basically you do things like if else statements uh, when you're doing it on a computer you know you save files or whatever when you do it with a robot you turn on wheels basically it's the exact same stuff but anyways we've been going along with this whole series and one of the things I've been trying to show you is how to use uh, artificial intelligence so open Open AI's API to be able to use natural human language uh, to be able to interact with this system. Uh, so basically, uh, we have a function file. We send the function file along with the query up to Open AI, and basically we say, "Okay, this is the query. This is what this person is asking for. Which one of these functions is most appropriate?" Open AI sends back which function is most appropriate, and then we trigger that function. Now in the previous class, we, uh, we added SQL light into this whole system so that we had a caching mechanism. So what we mean by a caching mechanism is that if we go out and make a request, right? So we make a query, we make a request, we get the response back from the API. Why don't we save that response for the future so that if we have the exact same query in the future, we can just go to our local database. We don't have to make an API call with all the security implications and price implications and all that kind of stuff. So we added a SQL light into this the system so that we could save uh, queries when they're made with the appropriate responses, with the response that comes back. Um, and so we can just use that going in the future. Well, here's the thing, right? Now that we have that data store, now that we have that SQLite database, we can start adding additional functionality. And so one of the, uh, the pieces of additional functionality that I added for today is the ability to add meaning to words or to change meaning for words, right? So we have the person who makes the query, right? You know, what time is it? KRS, bonjour, whatever else. They say something. Well, what happens when OpenAI doesn't know the proper function to return back, 
right? So it, currently it returns back an I don't understand. Well, if OpenAI doesn't understand, but you do, wouldn't it be nice to be able to tell the computer what the meaning is? So that big blue bus or whatever it is that I said, right? If I say big blue bus, what is that supposed to mean to the computer? So basically the computer will now say, I do not understand. What does big blue bus mean? And I can say, what time is it? So the next time I ask big blue bus, it will give me what the time is. Beyond that, right, we want to be able to make, uh, make changes if there's a mistake. What happens if OpenAI returns the wrong response to a query? So I see this sometimes. It'll think I'm asking for a joke. So one of the functions that we have is a joke function. Make me laugh about cats or make me laugh about Lewis Rossman. <laughs> right? Anyways, here's the thing. Sometimes you'll say something that is not supposed to be a joke. You're not asking for a joke, but it, it, it like leans to the joke thing. So it'll give you back a joke instead of whatever it is that you're asking for. So one of the things that we can do now is we can say wrong answer. When we say wrong answer, it'll say, oh, what is this supposed to mean? And then we can tell it what it's supposed to mean. That gets saved. So in the future, we get that new meaning. We get that new function call instead of the wrong one that OpenAI uh, presented. So basically, in the class today, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to add uh, these, these correcting, these manual correction features to your AI app so that you can help train your AI system uh, along with uh, OpenAI. So before we get into the actual code itself, I kind of want to diagram out how the system is working so you can intellectually understand what's going on. One of the things that I will say with this code is all of this code will be on GitHub. It may be on one of my other sites and it is free for you to use. Um, I have not put any licensing on it. For the most part, everything here I, I've, I've hand written out. There is a couple of copy and paste things, but to be honest with you, I don't think anything here is sophisticated enough to be able to claim intellectual property on anyway. So if you see this, you want to use this, go take the code and have fun with it. Don't worry about me. So anyways, uh, basically, so with this system, so we have our computer, right? So uh, on this particular computer, um, I, I'm using an Intel based, uh, it's a MacBook Pro with Mac OS. Uh, everything that I'm showing you should work on Windows, should work on Linux. But again, it's, that's, that's its own environment, so you might have to do a couple of configurations. One of the things that I will tell you is that if you're going to be, uh, if you need to install Pi Audio, so Pi Audio uh, is the, the system that allows you to use the microphone uh, to actually have Python be able to listen to the microphone and then turn that into uh, text. One of the things I will warn you is Pi Audio sucks. <laughs> like when it works, it works great. Uh, but I've installed Pi Audio in many, many, many different systems, and sometimes it works like a champ. And other times it's about two hours of troubleshooting. Uh, I do not know your system, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, but basically, Pi Audio is going to be required uh, for the voice communication component. Uh, the first code that I'm actually going to show you, though, is going to be completely text based. So the completely text based version doesn't need Pi Audio, but if you're going to talk to it, you know, actually do voice communication, you will need Pi Audio. And that's, you know, <laughs> have fun. Have fun is all I can say. Anyway, so I got my computer here, right? Uh, so on my computer, basically, I have the main script. Uh, so like main.py, it's not actually called main.py. It has a big long name to it. But basically, we have our main script here. Uh, and this has um, the, uh, the, the database connection information to it. It has the if l statements. It has all of basically the main script here. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have a functions uh, script. So I call it like AI uh, function script. And basically within this script is all of our functions, right? So I have a hello function that says hello. I have a goodbye function that says goodbye. I have a time function uh, that basically goes to the OS asks for the current time and returns the current time. Um, I have a weather function. The weather function makes a number of what are called REST API calls uh, to find out what the current weather is in your location. It finds your external IP address. Using your external IP address, it finds what your general geographic location is. Once it has that, it takes the lat and longitude and then goes to open, I think it's called open weather map API. And then with your lat longitude and an API key, it then gets 
your temperature, and that's where we get the, the weather and all that kind of stuff, right? So we have the weather thing, uh, and then we have a joke uh, function, and the joke function is basically tell me a joke about whatever else, and that, uh, that actually uses uh, open AI too. And so the idea here, right, is we can just keep essentially adding functions to this AI function file without having to do a lot of modification uh, in our main, uh, our main script, right? So basically what happens here is uh, you either talk, you either talk or you have text input uh, into your computer and basically uh, you make the query. You say hello, you say bonjour, you say guten tag, you say whatever it is, right? So that query, uh, along with your entire uh, functions file. So what happens here is you actually read the entire functions file into a variable value. So we have a variable value for the functions file and we read all of this text into that variable, right? So that goes into a variable and then we send all of this up to open AI. So we say, this is the person's query. This is the functions that we have what function are these people looking for? And then, you know, you know so I say, uh, let's say, I say bonjour. We send bonjour up with all the functions and then OpenAI returns with this person is asking for hello, right? So that's the basic way the system goes. And with the hello there, there's an if else statement in this main Python script that will then say trigger the hello function in the functions file, right? So that's the basic system that we've had. Then basically what we added uh, last class was SQL, uh, SQLite, SQLite, however the hell you say it. Anyways, it's a relational database system. So now we have a decision table, right? So we have a, an AI DB, so we have an AI database with a decision table. Uh, part of it is like the request, part of it's the response, right? So basically what we added last time is this main script, when you have a query, uh, basically when you, have, when you have the query, what it'll do first is it'll go to your database, to your decision uh, table. It will see if that query is already there. Does this query already exist? in this table? If yes, we simply read what the response is that's previously been saved, and then we trigger that particular function. If no, so it goes here, it looks to see if that query has been made before, nope, then it makes a query to OpenAI, it gets the response back, it then adds the request, and it adds the response as it triggers the event, so that in the future, instead of having to go to OpenAI, it can now simply go to this table uh, to be able to pull what function it's supposed to trigger. Now, the cool thing with this, right, is now once we have this data store, once we have this database, once we have this uh, with, with table, we can now start editing things, right? So basically, if I say something, right, I say bonjour or whatever, and uh, it, goes, it goes to this table, it finds bonjour, it gives me the response, but then I think that response is wrong. I don't want you to say hello when I say bonjour. I want you to say goodbye, or I want you to say a joke or something. What I can now do is I can now say this needs to be changed to the new function that I want to trigger. Again, with that, that big blue bus or whatever, um, right? I want big blue bus to now be what is the weather. Also, if I make a request, an open AI doesn't know what function it's supposed to use, right? So in here, one of the things in here is don't understand. So if OpenAI responds back with don't understand, right? Big pink giraffe. And OpenAI is like, well, that's not hello, that's not goodbye, that's not time, that's not weather, that's not a joke, I don't know what big pink giraffe should be. It'll respond back with the don't understand. And then we have a little snippet of script here to then request from the user, what does big pink giraffe mean? And I can say time. So big pink giraffe now means time. So if I say big pink giraffe in the future, I will get the time function uh, instead of anything else. Now I know these examples sound moronic, they sound stupid because that's me. <laughs> Welcome to Eli the Computer Guy class. I come up with absurd things to get stuff into your head. But one of the things you need to be thinking about, again, like with this function file, if this file gets really, really, really big, right? Again, we're gonna have this robot. Right? When we're going to go after Lewis Rossman, when we're going to attack Lewis Rossman, we need the best 
robot we can ever train. So we're not, we're not going to have five functions or 10 functions here. We might have 200 functions at the end of the day to be able to control that robot. Right, And so as you have more and more functions, it does become more and more difficult for the AI to know specifically what function you're looking for. So by adding this manual training subsystem in here, it allows us to really uh, drill down uh, to be able to tell the robot exactly what we want to have happen when we make specific commands. So this is a very ugly diagram of how this system works. So with that, let's go over and actually take a look at the code. So first, let's look at the text-based example. So with a text-based example, what this is, is I tippy-tap type in the commands and it simply gives me a text response back. Uh, I don't have to talk. So this can be very useful for you uh, learning how this type of system works with, again, not worrying about Pi Audio. You think I'm joking about Pi Audio. Pi Audio is a damn disaster. Anyway, so I click the little run button and this is now asking how can I help? So I can say bonjour to it. Uh, basically we can say here, query in database, uh, SQLite was used. Um, let's see here. Uh, this shows us are the query set results. This is the definition, bonjour equals hello. And then I get a message back saying hello, right? So I, I say bonjour to the system. This has already been asked before, so it's already in the database, and it gives me the response back, right? If I say, I don't know, yo, dude, was up? I can ask that. Um, we can see, yo, dude, what's up? AI response, uh, hello, query not in database, open AI was used. So instead of going to the database, it went to the database, couldn't find a result, so it went to open AI, added to database, yo do was up, equals hello, and so the message back from the system is hello, right? So this is the basic way that is done. If it's already in the database, you get the response from the database. If it's not in the database, you get the response from open AI, but then also that gets saved into the database, so in the future, you make a a local request instead of going out to the API. Uh, now if I say, I don't know, big blue cat, right? Uh, the response comes back now, don't understand, right? What the hell does big blue cat mean? Um, I don't understand what big blue cat means. What does it mean? And so I can put in something here. So I can say time, so the time function. I then hit enter, message I learned big blue cat means time. So now if I do big blue cat again, we now get what the time is because now that is in the database, right? I just taught my system what big blue cat is supposed to be. Now I look at this, I'm like, oh, that's not what big blue cat is supposed to be. Everybody knows big blue cat really means weather. So what I can see do is do wrong answer, right? Because that's the wrong answer. Uh, wrong answer, sorry, what does big blue cat mean? And I can say weather. Uh, updated big blue cat equals weather. Now I do big blue cat again, and now it gives me the weather and tells me the current temperature is 57 degrees. So now with that database, we're able to add manually uh, what new definitions should be, and we, sh we are able to modify what previous definitions are uh, to make the system a lot easier to use. So for this example, what I just showed you, you need two files, right? So we have the AI decision user learn .py script. <laughs> There's my awesome naming convention. So this is the main script. Uh, when I was talking about the main script, this is the name of the main script that we're using. And then we also have the AI underscore function dot pi script. And this is what contains all of our functions, all of our uh, uh, usability, right? Uh, so here uh, we import date time. Uh, this allows us to get what the time is. We import request. This allows us to get rest API calls. And we import open AI. This allows us to do the 
the jokes. A client for OpenAI, you put the API key in for OpenAI. We uh, API for weather, you put your API key in uh, for open weather, and that's there. Uh, past that, we then have these functions. So this is all the functionality I currently have uh, for this particular script. Um, and again, the cool thing with this is you can just keep adding and adding and adding to this uh, as you want, right? So uh, we have a hello function, message equals hello, and you return that message. Goodbye function, message equals goodbye, and you turn return that message. I don't understand, I don't understand, and you return that message, right? Get current time. So this is a little bit more complicated. So current time equals date time dot date time dot now, and then message equals a string of current time dot string time, and this gives you the day, the uh, the hour, and the minute. And so that gives us a string of what the current timestamp is, and then we return that particular timestamp. Uh, we then have current weather. Uh, so we get our IP address. Um, so I was having some issues uh, with the the REST API call in order to get my IP address. So I didn't want to mess with that today, have issues when I was doing this recording. But normally you can go to api.ipfi.org. This is a REST API call to get what your external IP address is. You pull in your external IP address. Once you have that, uh, you can get the geographic data about your IP address by going to ip-api.com, JSON, with your IP address. This will give you a whole bunch of geographic information. And then you come down here for the weather. Again, you do request.get, you do the open uh, weather, uh, map API call with your latitude, your longitude, and your API key in JSON format. And then the message here is current temperature is weather main temp. So that's the current temperature. High is weather main temp max. Low, weather main temp min. Uh, then weather zero main. And this is what gives us the, the, the description of what the weather is. And we return that. Then we have get a joke. Uh, this is an open AI API. I call. Uh, basically, you are a comedian, answer in less than 25 words. We're sending the query. So the query from the user actually comes to this. And basically, we feed that into this whole get a joke thing. And then we return the joke. So basically, this is the function file that we're going to be sending up to OpenAI to say which one of these functions is the person asking for. Uh, then we come over here, again, to this main Oh, this main file, and this is pretty simple. It gets a lot more complicated when you start doing the voice communication. Anyways, import OpenAI. We're going to import that AI underscore function file that we created. So we're going to import it so that we can actually access the functions in there directly from this script. We're going to import OS because we need to do some path joins and that kind of thing. And we're going to import SQLite 3. That's going to allow us to interact with that SQLite database client for OpenAI. You're going to plug in the API key here. Then uh, we're going to go to the database information. So current directory equals os.path directory name os path absolute path. So this, this is how you get the path to the directory this script is in. So do remember when you're dealing with Python, by default, it will both write to and try to read from your, your user root directory. So if you actually want to be able to move the file around, you need to do this mess. And so this will give you the path for whatever folder this script is currently in. Uh, we're using this for the database. So db name equals ai.db. We're going to do join. We're going to join current directory with the database name. And then we're going to do a connection. So this is all for SQLite. Basically, con equals SQLite 3 connect to this path, right? current directory with the name. Cursor equals con.cursor function. Then we have this create table. So this is a SQL statement. Create table if not exists decision. So what's really cool about SQLite is with this database. If the database does not exist, it will automatically create the database. You do not have to manually create the database, right? If the table doesn't exist in the database, it's a new database or whatever, it will create the table if it doesn't exist. Uh, we have an ID, I always use an ID, uh, integer primary key, we have a query is text and response is text, and that's a SQL statement. Then we have the cursor dot execute, so execute the SQL statement, so create table if it doesn't exist, and create that table, and then we do con.commit, so connection.commit, do this. 
If you do not commit, if you do not commit, it doesn't actually occur and you get all kinds of weird problems. Again, dealing with SQLite, the only thing with SQLite, I will say, is if you forget this commit, you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> uh, then we have the file, right? So we imported AI function basically as a module so that we can actually access those functions later, right? So down, way down here, we have these if else statements, right? And so answer equals AI function, goodbye. AI function, hello. AI function, get time. AI function, get weather. AI function, get joke, right? So we imported AI function at the top so that we can actually access the functions directly from the script. But to be able to feed that information uh, to OpenAI, we need to turn that function file into a variable value so that we can send it up. So file name equals AI underscore function dot pi, right? That, that script that I showed you. We're doing this OS path join current directory with file name because it's in the same directory, right? And then with open, so we're opening file path read as file function file function equals file function dot read. So this is an object. So we have to use the dot read down here in order to turn that object into text. And so now file underscore function variable has the value of this entire function script here. So everything that's in there is now a text value, right? Then we come down here uh, to the AI request function. So this is the, uh, the request function, uh, AI request. So we're going to send the file function, that file function variable that we created, along with the query, what the person is asking, up to OpenAI. Then from here, we have system. You are assisting in choosing the most suitable Python function uh, for a user and a lot of assistance. You will be provided with available function names for this program. Please only provide the name of the function without additional information or responses. Do not provide any response other than the correct function name. If no function is appropriate, return don't understand. All right. So again, with these prompts, sometimes you really have to tell it what you don't want. <laughs> Anyways, so those are all the assistants, so that hopefully we get what we want. Final assistant here is that file function variable value. So everything in that function file we now send up, and then the final, the final user role is the query itself, what the person is asking. So this will be bonjour, it'll look in that entire AI functions file, look for the, the, the function that's most appropriate, and hopefully we'll return hello. Response equals, this is, this is how you actually pull the response out of the, uh, the, the response from OpenAI, and then you're gonna return this. So this is a function here. So def, this is a function we're gonna be calling uh, later. OS.system, uh, clear. So what this does is it clears the screen. Again, one of the things you need to be thinking about with a UI UX environment is how to make it cleaner and nicer. And so one of the things is just clearing the screen, especially when you're dealing with that command line, clearing the screen can be very useful. So we clear the screen and for query last, we're gonna create this variable and have the value be nothing. So query last is when we say wrong answer, this is, this is what we're going to be going against with that. This is what we're going to be checking is whatever the last query was. So now we're gonna do while true. So while true allows us to continue to loop that we don't have to keep pressing go every time that we wanna run this script. Query equals input, how can I help? Right, so that's that, that input. Query equals, so basically we get the query and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip all the white space. Again, remember, <laughs> right? Uh, a query with white space at the end is different than a query without white space at the end, which is different than a query with, with white space and then the query. So if you have white space around your query, that can be a disaster. So we're going to strip out all the white space and then we're going to make everything lowercase. Again, what if one user makes capitalizes certain things and another user capitalizes different things? Remember, capitalization is different. So one thing is different than the other simply based off of capitalization. So we're just going to make everything lowercase, basically, again, to try to clean up, sanitize that data a little bit. Uh, once you, basically once you hit enter, we're then going to clear the screen again. Uh, we're going to print out on the screen, you saw this, query and what the query is. So this is the troubleshooting thing. So on here, it'll say query and what you put in. If exit in query, so if somebody says exit, then you get out. Uh, Connection.close, so basically we're going to close uh, the database connection and we're going to break out of the loop. If wrong answer in query, 
So basically, somebody types in the, the query, say wrong answer. Uh, what we're going to try to do is response is going to equal. So we're using the input function here. Sorry, what does query last mean? SQL is going to equal update decision set response question mark where query question mark. So response, right? So this response is going to go here where last query, right? So execute. So the SQL statement, your response that you inputted here is going to go into the database record, into the table record where query last is. So the last, that last query that you did, that is now going to get updated. Uh, and then we're going to do connection commit. If for some reason that fails, uh, you're going to get an error. And then we're going to print out, outside of this, updated query last equals what the response is. Else, so basically, if wrong answer, right? So if somebody doesn't put wrong answer, else query last equals query. So basically what this does is there's the new query. So the new query is what we're using, and we're using query last to test on what the last thing was. So if I say wrong answer, that's now the new query. So if it's wrong answer, I need to test that against what the last query was. So if I say big blue bus, that will be last query. So if I say big blue bus, right, and that's not wrong answer, we're going to come here, last query, or query last, is now going to equal big blue bus, so that in the future, if the next thing I say is wrong answer, it will test against this. Uh, we're going to go down, we're going to try, SQL equals find, select all from decision, where query equals what the query is, cursor.execute, SQL find, and what the query is, right, so if I say hello, right, so hello is not wrong answer, so we're going to come down here, and then it's going to basically look in the decision table for where a query says hello. Result is going to equal cursor.fetch1, because I only need one result. I don't need all of them. I just need one result. Hopefully, there is only one result. Again, that's something you have to think about the database. Theori theoretically, you could have like 50 results for hello, but you don't necessarily want 50 results for hello. You only want one result for hello. So one of the things you can do here is by fetching one, you will simply fetch the first one, and hopefully that will keep it to be the only one so that you only have one record for hello. Except, if for some reason this doesn't work, SQL query for find did not work. So if result equals none, right? So I go out, so I do the query against the database. Uh, there is no result in the database. Response equals then, I'm going to go to OpenAI, right? Since there is no result, I'm going to go to OpenAI. It's the AI request, that function I showed you. I'm going to feed it the file function with the query. Print open AI response, whatever the response is, right? That whole thing up there. If understand not in response, so basically this is if it does understand, SQL equals insert into decision, query response values, question mark, question mark, execute SQL. So you're going to put query and you're going to put the response in. So basically if I don't understand isn't there, so basically it's anything else, it says hello, it says time, it says weather. What you're going to do is you're going to insert into the decision table the query and the response so that you can get that in the future. Con.commit, because you always got to commit. Remember to commit. In technology, it's very important that you commit. Uh, print, query not in database, open AI was used, added to database, the query equals the response. Else. Right? So basically, if understand is in the response, so basically I don't understand is in the response, print I don't understand what the query means. Learn, so the learn is going to now be a variable, equals input, what does it mean? SQL, insert into decision, query, response, values, question mark, question mark, execute SQL, query, and learn. Right? So basically, if OpenAI returns time, right? You know what to do with time. So that simply gets, you know, what time is it? The response is time. What time is it? And time gets added to the database. If it comes back with, I don't understand, it'll say, I don't understand. It'll say, what time is it? Right? And then you type out, it means time. And now that will be added to the database. So this is where you're manually doing it. Up here is where OpenAI essentially adds to your database. This is where you manually add to the database. Now this else here gets a little confusing. So this comes back from the none, 
right? So dun, 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 where's my none? Right here, if result equals none, so basically, um, if there's no value in the database, you go the, through this whole thing for dealing with open AI. But else, if there is a result, if there is a result from when you query the database initially, um, the index that you want is basically response will be at result two. So response equals result two. So result, oh, comes from up here. Where result equals cursor dot fetch one. So we fetch one record. And so response equals result two. So result zero is the ID number for the record. Uh, result one is the query for the record. And result two uh, is the response for that particular record. So again, do remember uh, in this kind of query set thing that one starts at zero. The, the first digit is zero, not one. So that's where we're getting into the response. So print query in database, SQLite used, because the query was in the database. Result query set, this is where it returns that set, the parentheses and the different values, so you know what you're looking at. Result definition, result one, so this is the query, equals result two, which is the response. So we have response here, right? So if hello is in response, answer is gonna equal the AI function hello. L if goodbye in response, answer is gonna equal a function goodbye. Understand, I learned query means whatever. Uh, let's see, time in response, AI function get time, weather in response, get weather, so on and so forth. And then from here, we're gonna print message and the answer. So this is a basic overview of how this system works as a text-based system. And again, this is where you can start that adding that database functionality so that you can query the database first, see if, that, if the query that you're making already exists there. If it does, simply get the response back. If not, go up to OpenAI, pull back the response. If OpenAI gives you a don't understand, you can manually tell it what you want it to be. If, if this whole system gives you a response that you don't want, you can say wrong answer and then manually give it the response that you want. Again, all this code will be on GitHub. Hopefully if you take a look at it, it makes a little bit more sense. I will probably clean, be cleaning up this code as we go through this project. I will warn you, trigger warning, and I do code like an MCSE and NT 4.0. So I think this is pretty good. <laughs> But there, should, there might be some developers out there that would disagree. It's functional. It's functional. What did we do back in 2000? When I was a tech professional in 2000, you know what we did? We made crap work. Sometimes it was ugly, but it worked. So that's how the text-based system works. Now we get into the voice demo. So that initial demo that I showed you where I was talking to the computer, this is where we start using speech to text services and we start using text to speech services. Uh, we are using the speech recognition module here for Python. And with that, we are using Google's services in order to do this. It is important to understand that Google services actually do require an API key. They have put in like a a test API key. So when you download a speech recognition as a module, uh, there is an API key that they give you with it. That's kind of like a testing API key. So it's one of those weird things where like at any time Google can shut it off at any time Google can rate limit it or whatever else, but generally it works. Again, again, this is one of those things that goes back to 99.999% of the time it just works. So it's a lot easier using Google's speech services than trying to use somebody else's speech services. But every once in a while it, it flubs. So that's just something uh, to keep in mind. If you start having problems with it, if you go to the speech recognition module page, they'll show you to add, how to add your own API key. So if you have your own Google uh, speech services API key, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be just a normal API call but if you still start running into like weird issues it may be something to do with google cracking down on this open api key 
So anyways, uh, this is the code. Uh, this code gets a little bit more complicated because we do have the whole uh, speaking the answer, uh, text to speech, uh, and we have speech to text. And so we do have to make some more function calls in here because instead of just being able to tippy tap type out something on the, the keyboard, we actually have to talk. And when we talk, it has to take the voice from the microphone, turn that into an object, turn that object into text, spit back that text, and all that kind of stuff. A little bit more complicated, not a big deal. Um, so yeah, the other thing with this too is do make sure that Pi Audio is installed and you get to have fun figuring that one out. Anyways, we're importing the open AI module. We're importing the AI function. So we do not change the AI function file at all. The exact same AI function file. Gonna import OS. We're gonna import GTTS uh, or from GTTS. We're gonna import GTTS. So this is Google's text-to-speech service. So you're going to need to insta uh, install that GTTS module. Uh, and this is what's going to speak to you. So speech recognition recognizes your voice. You talk to it. GTTS is where it talks to you. Uh, speech recognition as SR. So we use an alias here. Import SQLite. So we have the database. Uh, here is where you plug in your open API key or AI API key. Uh, this is the same as before. We're still using the SQLite database, so ai.db. You'll notice I'm using the exact same database. So when I use this as a text version, it dumps into the database. And when I use it as a voice version, it dumps into the database. So both scripts dump into the same database, right? Again, that's one of the things to, to be thinking about when you build these systems. Uh, we're doing our connection here as we did before. We're creating the table if it does not exist. We're executing. And what are we doing? We're committing. If you like it, then you better put a ring on it. <laughs> if you like the SQL statement, then you better damn commit. <laughs> commit to your SQL statements. We don't take any philandering programmers around here. Anyways, I am going to keep hammering that home because if you don't commit, again, it's, it's not just that it's a problem. It's, it's, a stu it's one of those... Oh, yeah, it's, it's one of those not hard failures. There's hard failures and soft failures and then stupid failures. If you don't commit, it's a stupid failure. It's just not good. Remember to commit. Anyways, uh, then we're going through the AI function, right? We're turning that uh, into a variable value as we did before. So we're open as read. That's a uh, object. Then we need to turn that object into text. That's why we use read here. And so we have this. So uh, this first function, define AI request, this is the exact same uh, function that we had before. Literally, absolutely no change to it. So we're not going to re-go over that. Then we have define speak, right? So answer, right? So you know how we had answer before, and that will get printed out on the screen? Now we're going to send answer to the speak function. And so what the speak function is, is we say language equals English. And then we're going to try myobj equals gtts, text equals answer. So we're feeding it the answer text, language equals English, slow equals false. We're going to save this to response.mp3. Now you'll notice this is just kind of a disposable file. As far as I'm concerned, this is a disposable file. So this will just get sent to my root directory, right? I don't, I don't use the path and the join and all that crap there because I don't really care. It's just a temporary file. So it will go to my home directory. Then we're going to do os.system afplay response.mp3. So what AF Play is, is simply an Apple file player. Again, I'm using a MacBook Pro. So AF Play is a command line MP3 player. So that's what I'm using. If you're using Linux or if you're using Windows, find a command line uh, MP3 player, install it, and then make that call there. So basically, I'm just calling AF Play and then doing the response.mp3. One of the things I will warn you with this, though, is um, when this creates the response.mp3 file, it adds white space to the end. I don't know if it adds white space to the end or what exactly is going on, but basically there, there's silence. There's silence at the end of this. So when you're talking to the computer, you do have to wait a second or two before you talk to it because actually that MP3 file has not finished um, talking yet. Even though it's silent, it's still running. So if you're trying to talk while that file is still running, it won't work properly. Uh, I'll kind of show you that at the end. We'll go through another demonstration again. Uh, we're going to try to do this. Uh, if that doesn't work for some reason, we are simply going to pass. Uh, so that is the speak function. Uh, define, um, this is a speech to text. 
So initially, we're going to make query equals nothing. So this is kind of like a, there's a while true loop, so it's going to keep looping. So one of the things that we want to do is we just want to eliminate query. We're just going to make it be nothing. We're going to, we're going to zero that out so we don't have like the continuous previous query messing things up. R equals sr.recognizer with sr.microphone as source. Audio equals listen. So basically, we're going to listen. The query then is going to be R recognize Google from audio. So this audio is where we listen. We're going to take that. So that's an object. We're going to take that, and this is what turns it into text. And then again, as we did before, we're going to turn it into all lowercase. Again, we're going to standardize everything so we don't get into stupid problems. Uh, and so query is going to be the recognized text all in lowercase. Print query, so whatever the query is, and the value for query. Uh, except if there's an unknown uh, error value, Google Speak Services, unknown error. Uh, if there's a request error, it'll tell you again if there's something wrong with that API call, that will get spit out. And then we're going to return query, right? So basically, we're going to call this, and then we're going to return the text of whatever the microphone uh, picks up. Okay, uh, then we're going to do os.system clear. So we're going to clear the screen to make everything look nice. And then we're going to go down to this while true loop and try to explain all this. Answer equals nothing. Again, just to make sure we clear that out. Query equals nothing. I probably don't actually need that there, but that's still there. Response equals nothing. So again, this is since this is speech, and sometimes the speech system gets triggered by noise. And so it's not a, sometimes the loop can move forward even when there isn't any speech. And so then you get, again, you get into stupid issues. One of the things here is by clearing all of this out, you don't get it like constantly repeating the same words at you. Um, again, that's one of the weird things. Like, so when you do the input, right, input, what I showed you the previous demonstration, it stops, even though it's a, a while loop, it stops until you hit enter, right? Until you hit enter, it won't flip over. Since this has a bit of that automagical functionality with the speech services, sometimes a noise or something stupid will trigger that loop to loop again. And if you don't zero out these values, it'll, it'll just start nagging you or whatever. So anyway, that's why you zero out the values. Uh, we print out on the screen, say something. So query equals speech to text. So we're gonna call the speech to text function from here, right? And at the end of it, we're gonna return query. And so for here, query is going to be whatever that returned value is. OS.system, we're gonna clear the screen. If query equals nothing, pass. So again, if for some reason this thing triggers, maybe it's a noise, but there's not actually text, so it's nothing, we're just gonna pass, we're just gonna continuously loop through. Uh, LF, exit inquiry, answer equals goodbye. So we're gonna speak, the speak function, answer goodbye. We're gonna print goodbye, and then we're gonna break. So break breaks us out of loop. So we're gonna send goodbye to the speak function, and it's gonna tell you goodbye, and then it's gonna break. L if wrong answer in query, answer equals, sorry, what does query last mean? Speak the answer. So it'll say, what does a query last mean? Print the answer. Uh, then we're going to learn equals speech to text. So the speech to text function, is going to, it's going to start listening to the microphone. And then whatever you say is going to go into the learn value, except if for some reason that doesn't work, there's going to be a failure there. And then we're going to say try try SQL updates decision set response query. So we're going to execute the SQL statement. So learn, so learn is going to be the response for where query, for where query last is. So if you do a search for the, the, the last query, we're going to update based off of that. And then we're going to commit answer equals I learned query last means whatever. And then we get an error if there's a SQLite error. Else, query last equals query. So that's what we did before, right? So if this goes through normally, whatever the, the, the query is, that's now for query last. Uh, try, uh, SQL find, select all from decision where query equals a question mark. So we're gonna try to find any records where that query exists in the database. So we're gonna fetch one. We're gonna get an error uh, if that doesn't work for some reason. If result equals none, 
right? Response equals AI request. So this is gonna be that open AI call, function file query. Print open AI response, was whatever the response is. If understand not in response, so basically, if it doesn't say, I don't understand, if it says anything else, try, insert into decision, query response, query response, commit, query not in database, open AI used, added to database, right? So basically, if it understands uh, what, what, what function it should offer, that gets added to the database. Error if not, else, what does query mean? Speak the answer, so it'll say what does what does that query mean? It'll actually say it, it'll print it out. And then we learn from speech to text. We're gonna get that value back from speech to text and that's gonna be learn. And then we're gonna try, insert into decision, right? Query and learn uh, to actually add that. And the answer is gonna equal, I learned query means whatever the learn is. Uh, we're gonna come down here to else. So if, if there is a record in the database already, Response is going to equal uh, result two. We have all of this. So query in database, SQLite used. This is the result. Result one equals result two, as we did before. Response equals response. If hello in response, answer equals AI function hello. Elif goodbye in response, answer equals goodbye. Right. So basically, this is going to those functions as we did before. If answer does not equal nothing, print message and what the answer is, and then speak what the answer is. So we've been creating all of these answer values along the way. And so once we get to the end, it will then speak whatever that answer value is. So now that I showed you how that speech code works, I do want to show you that weird issue with kind of like the weird lag at the end of the MP3 files. So when you use Google's text-to-speech service, it'll turn your text into an MP3 file, but for some reason it adds uh, an extra second or two of just silence at the end. And so the issue is, is if you try to talk while that MP3 file is playing, um, it's not listening to you yet and it's going to be a bit of a disaster. So one of the things that I do is I look for the text prompt to show up because when the text prompt shows up, I know that the MP3 file has finished playing. And this is one of those weird UI UX things that you have to figure out. And uh, again, it's just something to, to kind of keep in mind. So if I do this, right, purple car. What does purple car mean? Time. I learned purple car means time. Purple car. Thursday, 1518. Wrong answer. Sorry, what does purple car mean? Hello. I learned purple car means hello. Purple car. Hello. So there you go, there's just a demonstration. Again, one of those things you have to be thinking about when you're building these systems of how, how to let the user know when it's appropriate to talk and some, some issue that you might run into. I actually had to do some troubleshooting. This took me a few minutes of troubleshooting because I couldn't figure out what was going on uh, until I literally opened up the MP3 file and found out there was that extra, extra second or two uh, of basically dead noise. And so whenever I was trying to talk to the computer, the MP3 file was still playing, so it wasn't listening, which, call, which again caused, as they say, stupid problems, right? There's hard fails, soft fails, and stupid fails. Once you start dealing with speech services, you will get really used to stupid fails. So there you go. We just went through a class where I showed you how to manually train your AI-powered little, little talking computer system. One of the main things that I want you to take out of this class is whether or not you try to replicate this code or do a project like this. One of the things that I want you to be thinking about, though, is all of these different subsystems that come together in order to create this particular product. One of the things that I get really 
really, really frustrated with right now is there's a lot of people in the tech field that just think AI is going to quote unquote do everything, right? There doesn't need to be coders. There don't need to be technology professionals because AI is going to do it all, right? There's this idea that you're just going to make an open AI call and it's going to solve all your problems, launch nukes or whatever else. One of the things that I'm trying to show you here is that when you're actually trying to build a solution, there is a hell of a lot more to a solution than simply an open AI call. Again, with this, you know, we're now using a database system. So we're using a very basic database system, but we're doing using a relational database system here in order to be able to store uh, the queries and the responses. Uh, we have the, the functions. What, what do we actually want to trigger uh, when we ask for something? So we have to write and code out all of those functions. We have to come up with a system uh, to allow us to correct when AI makes a mistake or to teach the AI when the AI doesn't know what the answer should be. And the interesting thing too is again, when we talk about teaching AI, so many times when we think about teaching AI, there's, there's uh, the people think about like fine tuning the model. Again, oh, you need to fine tune OpenAI's model or whatever else. There's this idea that you have to be interacting directly with that LLM. And whenever you're gonna be training LLMs, that gets to be expensive, right? Um, I was watching one thing where to train like a pretty small LLM might cost you $1,200 in shared server time, right? That's a hell of an issue. And one of the things I want you to be thinking about, when you think about teaching your AI and you think about that system, do you really need to fine tune the LLM? Do you really need to retrain the LLM? Or do you just need to put a record in a database, right? <laughs> one of these things will cost you $1,200. One of these things, I don't know, costs you a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a penny, right? But again, at the end of the day, when the user is interacting with that system, they're not really thinking about whether the LLM is providing the service or whether it's just simply coming from a database call. And so this is one of those things that I really want you to be thinking about. Again, also, when we talk about AI, here's an interesting question. If you have a database that is infinitely scalable, and insanely fast and is full of a whole bunch of data that you can query against, at what point does that appear to be intelligence? Again, that's one of the interesting things when we talk about AI, like there's just this fascination with LLMs and other things like this is AI. But an important thing to be thinking about is when the end user is using your service, Again, do you really need an AI, LLM, or whatever? Or do you just need a, a database with a crap ton of records and have it be able to respond incredibly quickly? Um, I have a buddy of mine that actually works in the AI space doing analyst work, uh, and I talk with him every once in a while about what is AI and what is just a really fast database. And one of the things he laughs about is he's like, yeah, 90% of what people call AI is just insanely fast databases. But at the end of the day, the, the result that you get out of it looks like intelligence. So, you know, what the hell? Uh, that's one of the things. Uh, there's Azure Cognitive Services. And one of the things I really liked about Azure Cognitive Services, so Azure is Microsoft's platform, and Cognitive Services, their, like, buzzword for it was AI-like services. So it's speech services and vision services and other stuff. And basically what they say, it's AI-like. They, they literally, it's not AI. What they're doing isn't AI but it looks like AI. And so again, this is one of those things you have to consider. I mean, again, think about this system. If we completely took out the open AI functionality, we ripped out the open AI functionality, so open AI would not be able uh, to send a response back. How long would it take you simply to manually train this with simply the speech services and it filling up the database to be able to give you the results that you want 99% of the time. I think about this with HomePods. I have a HomePod at home. Yep, I bought the HomePod five years ago or whatever because I don't, I don't order Ubers for my HomePod. I don't order pizza for my HomePod. I use my HomePod for music. And think about it. What do I ask my HomePod? Set a timer. What time is it? Uh, what's the weather? Play my favorite music. There's probably like 10 things I ask my HomePod. So literally, if I just manually trained it on those 10 things, um, it would look like AI to me, but it wouldn't exactly be that complicated, right? This is the kind of stuff I really want you to be thinking about. Uh, and so anyways, yeah, so I'm having fun uh, building this Lewis Rossman tracking robot. Uh, what I wanna do, well, we're gonna, it's gonna take a little while. I wanna take this, 
and then put it into the robot, then start adding actual physical functions, like telling it to physically do things. Um, and so that'll be something, that'll be a class that'll be coming down the pike probably in the next couple of weeks. That will take a little bit of time to get all that working right. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I think this is kind of fun. Uh, as always, I enjoy teaching this particular class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.